Tableau community is really amazing in sharing knowledge, collaborating, and taking the data analytics and visualization to the next level. Recently, I came across a really amazing looking rounded progressive bar chart in Tableau, which was created by Matt, one of the Tableau community members. And I really like that chart and thought to give it a try myself. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna share how to create a rounded progressive bar chart in Tableau. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. Welcome back, my name is Gurpreet and if this is the first time you are visiting my channel then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you stay up to date with all of my videos. So let's get started. So as you can see in this screen we are showing the rounded progressive bar chart in Tableau and where we are showing the sales percentage contribution by each of these subcategories. So for example, cheers are showing 14.43% of the total sales. Whereas phones, again 14%, storage is showing 9.66% of the total sales. And in this particular chart, we have created the rounded bars, edges in the bar chart. And also, if you notice, there is a slight shadow effect I have given for each of these bars, rounded bars. And also I have given a button kind of a shape at the starting of each rounded bar. And instead of this rounded shape, you can use any shape you like. So how we can create this chart? It's really easy and simple. So let's start by opening a blank workbook. And in here, I will connect to sample Superstore data set. So once we do that, first thing I would need to bring is subcategories into the row shelf. You can bring any other dimension you want or where you want to show the bars by any other dimension or measure, you can use that as well. But for this tutorial, I will be bringing subcategory into the row shelf, and I'll be creating two calculated fields. The first one is simply zero, which will be the starting point of the bar, and I can just give the name zero here, and press OK. And the other calculated field I need is one, and I will give the name one. So why we need this is to create the bars from zero to one because we are showing the percentage in this case. So zero considered as a zero percent and one is considered as 100%. So once we have this, I will then bring measure values to the column shelf. And if you see here, bars are created but with all these measure values. So we don't need all these values. So I will simply delete the ones which we don't need and we will be left with 0 and 1. And you will notice here, we will have the bar starting from 0 value and finishing at 1, which is 100%. So now as we have that, we will change the marks from bars to line. And you will see these two bars are created vertically, but we want to create a rounded bar edges for each bar, right? So we will simply bring these measure names and you can click command or control key based on if you are on Mac or Windows and then drag it to the path mark. And once you do that, you will see all the bars are created with rounded edges. We can simply go here and increase the size and we can change the view to entire view and you can see the rounded bars, rounded bar edges are created. Now, in order to create the effect which we have created here where we are want to show the progression what we need to do so let's look into that so first of all we will need to create a calculated field for percentage of sales right but before that i want to create a total sales field so here i will simply write total and i will enter the sum of sales so this will give me the total sales which we have so if i bring that into tooltips and hover over these ones, you will see it will show the same number of sales, which is 2.3 million across the board. So that is the calculation for total sales. Now let's create another calculation where I want to show the sales percentage for each category. So I will simply say sum of sales divided by total sales. And I will click OK. 
And if I bring that again into the tooltip and change the formatting to percentage by going into the paint section and change the number format to percentage. And now let's look at it. So when we hover over the accessories, it shows that it contributes to 7.19%. And same way appliances as 4.65%. But we are not able to see the progression progression in the bar chart, right? So how we can do that? So first of all, I will bring that sale percentage calculation into the measure values. And you will still see there is no difference here, right? This is because we haven't shown the color coding on each of these bars. So what I will do, I will bring this measure name by pressing command in my Mac and bring it to the color mark. And you will see something really interesting is created with the gradient values, right? Where we have three different measure names, 0, 1, and sales. So, but it is showing a gradient thing, gradient bars, bar colors. We don't want that. So this is because if you go into the path shelf, it is showing us the linear pattern. We want the steps. So I will click on that and you will start seeing the steps are created here. So now we can give different color for each of these sections. So one is basically our complete bar with 100%. So I would like to give it a color of gray. So let's pick a gray shade and let's give it a light gray. And zero and the sales, I want to keep it the same color. So I will pick up the orange in this case and let's try this orange and press OK. Once I do that, you will see these are in different sections, right? So I will bring the order here and you will see the zeros at the top. If you change the order on the measure name, it will show that which one is at the top or which one is at the bottom. So we want to show one at the top. So we have the gray background color and zero and then we have the sales values, right? Okay, you will see it here Number one, which is gray in color, is the background, which shows us the total sales. The orange bar, it is basically the percentage, which is 7.9% for accessories. And this gray thing, which you are seeing at the end, actually at the start, is because we have the sales percentage value at the bottom. We want to bring it up, so it over overlaps the starting point, which is zero. So now you will see here, we are only seeing the orange color for the percentage, right? And now that we have that, we will change the, I will like to change the size a little bit smaller. Actually this much looks good. And now what we want is, we want to show the percentage number here, right? So how we can do that? So first of all, I will create a duplicate value of the sales percentage. And then I will bring that duplicate value here, All right? So once we do that, you will see we have two duplicate values here. So this copy one came at this point. So what I will do, I will change the color for this one to the gray color, which we selected. Why we are doing that? Because, okay, let's go one step back because if you see here, now on the orange color, you are seeing that rounded corner as well. We want a straight line here. We don't want a rounded corner. So for that, I have to change the color because this is overlapping that one. So either if I bring it here at the bottom, you will see that orange color and the blue color. It's overlapped and changed the position. So I don't want it that way. So first of all, I will change this color and I will change it to gray color. So I will select this gray color and apply OK. And once we do that, you will still see that it is showing as a rounded value because of the sales value. So we simply need to do it, move these labels up and adjust and make sure we are in the right format. So I will go back and I will bring the sales copy field at the top. So now we need to show the label of sales percentage just next to this orange line. 
So how we can do that? So first of all, we will simply go to the label marks and show label marks here. And because we don't have any text label here, or actually we have to show it here. So by default, we just clicked all. And when we click on the line end, it will show us at the end of the line. And you can make the adjustments if you want to show it at the starting or end. But in this case, I want just next to the end of the orange line. So for that, we need to move these labels. So for this sales label copy one, I have to move it at the top. And once I do that, you will see it's coming here. And by just a little bit of formatting, I want to show it just on the right hand side. Once I do that, we are not overlapping it. So we are not overlapping the uh, labels. So sometime if we overlap, it becomes like that. And it is also showing the labels for this particular value, which we don't want. So we will go back here and we will make sure we do it at the center. So that was for this one and it was coming at the bottom. We don't want it that way. So just do a little bit of format and you will see it looks really amazing. Now I want to do the sorting. I don't want to show it in the uneven order. So I will simply go to subcategories and I will select sort. And then I will select the field by which I want to sort in the descending order. And I want to sort it by sales. So once I do that, I will see a really nice progressive bar chart with rounded edges in this format. Now the next step is to add the shadow at the bottom. But before that, let's do a bit more formatting here and remove all the border lines. We don't want any borders for rows or columns and we will remove all the grid lines as well. And we don't want any zero lines as well. And then we will just click on these values and I don't want to rotate labels, it's just by error I click that. So we will format the um, labels and I want to increase the size a little bit. Let's do it 10 and I don't want to show any zero lines or any access rulers for this as well. And I will hide the access. Another thing I wanted to do was to create the images at the start of these bars. So you can sh see the shapes. So I can create a placeholder field as zero and you will see the shapes are created. I will create a dual axis and I will synchronize the axis by right clicking at the bottom axis and you will see the circles are created at the start of each bar. And what I will do, I will go to the line section and change the mark to shape. And here I will reduce the size because I don't want it that big, right? For these shapes. And you can adjust the shape the way you want it. And you can also change the shape. So in this case, if I want a circle, I can do that. And the color I can change as well. So I don't want a color based on the measure name. So I will remove it from that value and I can do it, I can get the color whichever I want. So if you are using some icons, you can show it here by just selecting from the shapes by loading into Tableau repository shapes folder. And you can show a chair here, phone here, storage here, or you can just show different shapes if you want. So that gives you an added effect. So now I will hide all the headers. So I don't want to show any of these X's. So I will simply go here and remove the headers. So I don't want to show headers and I don't want to show the lines. So I will format here and I will make sure all the divider panes are not there. I don't want to show the divider panes for column as well as rows. So it is nice and clean, right? And I will remove this heading as well. So now that we have created this chart, let's create a dashboard and I will change the width of the dashboard to let's say 1500 by 800. That's pretty good. I will create the floating container and bring the sheet in here. And we can do a little bit of formatting here and we can make sure we have 
the whole size. So I will start from 0x and 0y axis and I will do 1500 and height is 800. So that will fit it really nicely on my dashboard. And now that we have this dashboard on the, the rounded bar chart, rounded edges bar chart on the dashboard. So now in order to create a shadow for this one, what I will create is I will create a duplicate sheet of sheet one. And here I will remove, and here I will remove the fields which I don't need. So I don't need the placeholder field for the shapes. I will remove that. I don't need sales and sales copy field. I will remove that as well. I don't need the labels. I will remove that. And the values for subcategories, I will format it and I want to show it as wide so it, it's invisible, right? And here, if I change um, this gray value, these are one and zero, right? So let's say I create another value here and change the color of one. I will say sum of one. I just need one, not. And I will bring that at the top. And I will remove the zero. And I will change the color of the sum one to a little bit darker shade so that let's say this looks all right so you can see the darker shade here now i will bring that sheet as a floating container and bring it here and the same thing i will do i will go to the layout of this sheet and start from zero and my axis as zero as well and 1500 and 800 as the height and I will move this floating worksheet back just to give that shaded effect and now you will see the top sheet we can't see the sheet sitting behind it so we will go here and make sure in the formatting we have transparent worksheet background right once we do that we will go to the sheet again the previous sheet with the background and we will make the changes there maybe x-axis and y-axis to three by three and you will start seeing we have that shadow created right and with the sheet for the second one i will delete everything we don't need the sheet name here press ok actually that was for the sheet sitting in the front i would like to go at the sheet too and in here i will just give anything any name and change the color to white it's just a bit of formatting a trick to get the dashboard with a nice shadow effect now the shadow color is really dark i don't want it too dark so i will go here and i will make the adjustment here and instead of that dark shade maybe i try this one which might look a little bit better so that way you can make some adjustments and you will see the really nice effect of the shadow with the rounded edges progressive bar chart and you can take your rounded bar chart or you can take your visualization to the next level by just creating this technique of the rounded edges bar chart I hope you guys really enjoyed this session and if you have any questions feel free to reach out by just dropping a comment in the section below. Thank you. See you next time.